So we're just going to give it a few minutes because we have you know, we still have people coming in through the waiting room. We have close to 80 devices that are registered for the meeting. And we know that, you know, this, this god awful commute, the traffic's awful trying to get to the synagogue for a meeting. So just give people time to, to make their way to their computers. I hope everyone's staying cool and hydrated. Um, at this stage in our Zoom lives, I don't think I need to, to uh, repeat too often that during the meeting, we'll ask everybody to stay muted. And if, if by accident you become unmuted, someone with a magic finger will mute you. Um, there will be time at the end of the meeting again where we ask everyone to unmute so we can have some chatter because one thing I've realized as we started coming back together again that I've missed, I never thought I'd say this, is the sound of Jews talking over each other, not through a computer. It's actually kind of fun to hear to hear voices in person. So we'll have a chance near the end to have some some talky talky time. Um, if people have, have questions, um, please use the chat feature. I think we all know how to use that. And, and Amber and I think Ilana will be around to be monitoring the chat. I will try to ignore it during the meeting. So we'll just give it a few more because we're not even halfway there in our numbers. And now I'm, I'm going to be a role model and mute myself because who wants to hear me talking? We've added the Israeli team now. We've added, I think we're going to add the Mexican team. Okay, fantastic. So, you know, that was, uh, that was uplifting. Uh, what was also? Hi, Jeremy, where are the dogs? I left the dogs outside my room. I might let oh, them in. Oh, say hi. I, oh, nice. I might let them in near the end, but they, they got very rude during the board meeting on Monday. Bear. Thank you. How are you doing, Marilyn? I'm hanging in there. It's 81, 82 inside and 108 outside. <sighs> And they said it's already hit 109 or 110 somewhere in Portland. That's a new record. Wow. Airport. How are you doing? We are doing well. Thank God. The, um, the 100 and 111 in Beaverton. Yeah, well, the, the guy, the young guy who's on like Coin News, he already came on and said it hit 109 or 110. It's not showing on my apps, but he said that it already got there like an hour ago. If, I think if, I need my allergy medicine. Yeah, if you're seeing a, a fork or the temperature from Portland, it's going to be lower because it's out at the airport, and they get cooled by the river. If Beaverton, no, the airport was two. The airport was two degrees higher than downtown yesterday. The airport hit, is the one that hit 108. Okay. Downtown was 106. I mean, 106. Yeah. If you Google Beaverton temperature now. You'll it's, get the 111. Yeah, it's it's, it's 111. Cold. I was just outside in it. it too it freaking hot. Unbelievable. I was driving and you know, it gets even hotter in your car. It was baking my brains out. Yeah. Well, on that happy note, it's a few minutes after four and I know we have some of the players already present. Oh, I see Lorraine with mm -hmm. Rabbi Rose. Mwah, mwah, mwah. I think we could probably go ahead and get started. So at this point, I will ask everybody to mute themselves. <laughs> Did that magically work? Are people muting? A few more people. Um, so to, to set the, the mood for our meeting, I would like to um, invite our cantor, Vitels, to who just became a, 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 a Saba again, um, to a new baby granddaughter a week ago, Mazel Tov, Mazel Tov, to please uh, open the meeting with, uh, with his beautiful voice and with a nigun. Um, one of my uh, most favorite, the Shevet Achim Nigun, the uh, getting, getting together happily, Nigun. I, 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 I,
Um, it's time to welcome our president, who never knew when he said yes to this job, what he was getting himself into, our trusty leader, our, our unwitting war president, Daniel Petra, please take it away and we'll spotlight you. Well, welcome everyone to our annual meeting. We haven't really made any time specifically to talk about the weather, so I'll just leave it at wow. Uh, I'll focus today's remarks mostly on telling you about the Shul's Board of Directors. As the congregation has grown to know and trust our professional staff, we've been able to shrink the size of our board and our committees. Our smaller board has been able to focus less on daily operations and more on strategic discussions regarding how Congregation Sherry Torah fits in the Jewish world generally, and specifically what we have to offer the Portland Jewish community. Our board is not just reclining on tiny clouds, gossiping and eating chilled grapes, though. We have some serious matters to handle in the coming fiscal year to ensure the continued prosperity of our congregation generally and major assets like our programming, our building, our cemetery and our religious school. We'll need to call on more congregants to help us with organizing and accomplishing those concerns that the pandemic postponed for us. And as our congregation gets more generally active, We'll want more active committees to work alongside of our professional staff so that we don't work them beyond their human endurance. If there's some area of congregational life that piques your interest, I urge you to contact me or contract, contact Jemmy to let us know where you'd like to make things better. Soon, we'll also be welcoming a new rabbi to our Bima to bring a new perspective on the Torah that guides our daily lives. I expect that this newness will draw other new faces into our shul, so I'd like to remind everyone that despite the difficulties of this past year, we're still the children of Avram Avinu. I hope you'll join me in giving him, his family, and all the other new faces you may see in the Hamish welcome that you gave to my in-laws 50 years ago and to so many others since. It all comes back to Torah, the reason we're here and the reason we're us. And I'm happy to yield the floor to Rabbi Josh Rose, who will share with us a word of Torah to get us properly started on the meeting. Thank you. Thank you, Daniel. And how beautiful to see everybody's faces. There are a lot of beautiful faces here. And um, I appreciate the opportunity to share a little bit of Torah. I have some, um, some more extensive thoughts that I want to share at the end of the meeting, if you'll indulge me. But for right now, I just want to offer a very, very brief vort, brief word of Torah. And uh, the, the Torah portion this week is, is Pinchas. And, and Pinchas is very famous because he was a zealot. He was an Israelite who commits a terrible act of violence against another Israelite. He, he kills this couple in cold blood because an Israelite has gotten together with a non-Israelite. And, um, and he kills them. Uh, and, and as if that weren't horrible enough, God rewards him. God commends Pinchas for, uh, for this act. And I want to just make uh, two, two observations about, uh, about this, very brief. 
um, both each separate from the other. Just very briefly, I want to say that, first of all, our rabbis couldn't argue with the fact that God seemed to have side with Pinchas and to celebrate this, this gory act of, uh, of zealotry and uh, spontaneous religious violence. So the rabbis confronted with the fact that there was no really getting around the idea that God supported Pinchas in this horrible act and celebrated him um, as a kind of Jewish hero, all the rabbis could do was try to limit the damage and to say, maybe in that one particular moment, for reasons that we, that we are not given to understand, God embraced that act, but we are never to integrate that into our own lives. Um, violence is not, uh, is not the, the, the way that we accomplish spiritual goals. And, uh, and then more than that, we are to protest against it whenever we encounter it. Um, and so the, the, the path against extremism and in favor of moderation is our path. So that's one thing that I just wanted to name. Um, so when you come across that reading during the weekly Torah reading, you'll, you'll have some context for understanding the Jewish tradition's uh, relationship to this confusing moment. But more than that, I wanted to say that we live in a world beset by religious extremism and in which religious fundamentalism uh, has too strong of a, of a voice across the globe and sadly and alarmingly within our own country. Um, and we all know that the, the, the damage and the harm caused by religious extremism and religious fundamentalism and we know that they're to be shunned and we have to confront those voices in an unafraid way and to say that that's not the way that human beings are to think and to act if you wanna be part of human society in the 21st century. So, but what I wanna say more than that somewhat obvious point, and by the way, religious extremism and fundamentalism even among our own people, which I believe is a betrayal of the Jewish tradition, but there you have it, it exists within among our own people, although thank God to a much lesser extent than other, uh, other traditions. But the real point is that um, as a result of the horrible damage that religious extremism has, um, has inflicted upon our world over the last many years, um, you know, most, most uh, obviously uh, the Twin Towers in, in, a, in a day that none of us will ever forget who lived through it, um, in part as a result of this extremism, one of the things that religious, um, the, the, excuse me, one of the things that many people have said is, well, religion is terrible and atheism is, uh, is the only rational response. And uh, what I wanna say to this particular religious community is that I think that that's also a mistake, that the, uh, that the proper response, hold on just a second, I'm gonna let my uh, mom get settled here. Okay. Can you okay. Thank you. Yeah. Oops. Okay. So um, we're just getting started here. It's so hot in here that she had to go get some ice. So that's what's happening on our end. So what I really want to say is that um, while it is true that religious fundamentalism is a terrible danger, the world urgently needs, urgently needs the voice of religious Jews, uh, and Muslims and Christians and all other people of good faith who see the shortcomings of modern society and want to help heal it. Um, and so uh, while we can look at our own tradition and say of Pinchas, no, we will not go there, we also know that we need not and must not abandon a vision of Torah, which is like water in a parched land. And we have to bring the values of our tradition into civil society. And there's an urgent need for religious communities to work and be part of the healing of our city, of our country, of our nation, and of our world. Thank you. Thank you, Rabbi Yasha Koach. Um, I realized that I actually have a slide deck that I was supposed to share, but I was so excited to get into the Cantor's Nigun that I didn't even put it up. So let me throw this up on the screen. And you'll see how quickly we are actually getting through the meeting. So we already had a musical start. Thank you, Cantor. We have a very simple agenda. Um, we've had a president's 
message uh, and a welcome. And I'll just let you know, this photo you're seeing um, was taken from one of the, uh, the screenshots, was captured from the live stream video at one of our first, uh, or I think it was our second in-person service. So it's nice to see people back in the sanctuary. And look, we've already had a Devar Torah. So we are zooming through our agenda. No pun intended, pun intended. So let's go on to the year in review, a uh, brief congregational update. Um, so we continue to grow and thrive despite this pandemic and despite being separated by so, so much. We came together and we continued coming together as we were putting the slide deck together and looking at last year's run list. It struck a lot of us how, how blindly we were sailing a year ago, how un, unfamiliar we were with this technology, how tentative we were with making decisions, how we didn't know how to navigate. And I think that we have all grown a lot. Um, our morning minion has been really strong on Zoom. Um, I know it's a lot of the same people who normally would come in person, but I had the opportunity to, to attend since I was hosting those times during the week. And it became really meaningful to me in a way I didn't realize it would have. Um, I know the Torah study, which was already a popular program twice a month, uh, grew to weekly and had a lot, lots of regular attendance. And in fact, this past Friday for Rabbi Rosa's final Ta'ama Torah, it was held in person in the sanctuary and I peeked in, nice, nice group. Um, our, the Rabbi and Cantor began live streaming Shabbat services from the chapel last April, as soon as we could get that uh, iPad on a stick put together. Good, thank you, Sisterhood, for letting us borrow your iPad. Um, and then we switched to Zoom mid-year when the numbers really went up and it became much too dangerous or ill-advised to even the rabbi and cantor to be in the same room. And the Saturday morning service that, that we started doing on Zoom allowed people to participate in ways they couldn't when they were just passively sitting and watching a live stream. And um, we had people uh, join in to chant Torah and to chant Haftorah. I even took the plunge and chanted Haftorah, which was very empowering. Um, and we got to have our beloved Frida on screen pretty much every week reading the prayer for the country the way only she can do it. Um, Rabbi was teaching regularly with uh, switching from his Kabbalah class to the Baal Shem Tov class, which was sometimes Greek to me, but fascinating to monitor. Our little espresso yourself check-ins uh, uh, once a week. Um, people just needed that extra 10 minutes during the day to unwind and, and think a few words of Torah. The young adults organized themselves into monthly happy hours and Shabbat dinners via Zoom and have now returned to in-person Shabbat dinners. They have really taken it upon themselves to keep their group cohesive and connected, which is wonderful. Um, I got to interact with some of the, uh, the students with uh, Kids Parsha Peaks with Rabbi Rose on Thursday afternoons, which was loads of fun. And we had some rabbis who joined us virtually to have conversations with Rabbi Rose and share some different points of view. Sarah Sturtz, I finally got to taste her cheesecake the other day, um, the cheesecake that she made in her Instant Pot. Um, I think it was one of her very first baking demos of how to make cheesecake in, a, in an Instant Pot. And she came back a couple more times to show us an apple cake and her chicken soup. And then Hadar Kedem, rising star of, you know, Future Food Network star, um, led us through some wonderful cooking classes. Um, Amber is here and Anne is here, I know, who have been meeting every other week with yarn crafting, which has become one of the most popular programs every other Wednesday night, just to sit online and do yarn crafts together. I mean, things we never would have thought of had we not been put in this position to figure out ways to connect. And then Box Club Social, our friend um, Ann Sanderson, one of our wonderful members during this pandemic, uh, created a new business for people to connect. And she was so kind to share one of her programs with us. But that's not all. We also added good morning prayers for those people who couldn't get up for Minion, who just wanted 15 minutes of morning prayers. And it brought some people in who normally wouldn't feel comfortable coming to a full service, but just to have a little sampling, a little taste. And for those especially who were in mourning this past year to be have the chance to stay Kaddish even in a virtual setting. Um, we hopped on board the Scholar Stream train through Ziegler and, and a rabbinic assembly to allow members to sample at no cost, some really fantastic learning nationwide. And then our Chesed group, um, our wonderful, wonderful Chesed group headed by Annette Dempsey and Leslie Beard, 
organized, I can't even tell you how many times this year, you probably know how many times because you got phone calls to check in on people and make sure everything was okay. And as the year went on, we found that people didn't need as many check-ins, but some people needed extra check-ins. And it was so important to be able to identify those people and know that just that, 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 ran, that you know, regular phone call, just a, hey, how you do? And just a, what's going on in your life? What can I listen to? And that information made its way to the people who could respond best. Um, very, very important. And I, I just love the work they do and support them so strongly. And then we have holiday celebrations. Um, again, thanks to the sisterhood, they underwrote the cost of our professionally produced High Holy Day services, which were both pre-recorded and then and then live streamed. And then some things were live in person, some were Zoom. Um, those went so swimmingly and allowed people to really uh, experience a different type of High Holy Days and approach the liturgy in a very intimate way while again, still sitting in their pajamas, which some of you already know, I am in my pajamas from the waist down at the moment. Um, we had a very Zoomy Hanukkah party complete with musical guests, you know, Michael Allen Harrison and the Peterson kids and Michael Sasnow, all the way from one of them Carolinas, can't remember if it's North or South, and our own Linda Harrison too. We had a spirited Purim party and, and wonderful Megillah readings. You all got little packets of Mishloach Manok that magically appeared in your mailboxes. Thank you, Linda Harrison, for putting those all together, and Leslie. Um, and then a Tikkun Lo Shavuot with multiple teachers and lots of learners uh, that just you know, brought in the holiday so beautifully. We celebrated two Zoom bar mitzvahs, uh, Elias Hornbecker last April and Ari Penner in October. And we hope that both these young men will return to the Bima in person to be able to actually be called to Torah and chant. And we had a midwinter pandemic wedding. Mazel tov, Melissa and Richard. That was a really special event. And I don't know how you stood out in that driving rain greeting your guests and then lighting the menorah for us. And we continue to reach people. So our the next slide is gonna just show you a brief snapshot of what our demographics look like, but our membership numbers, despite all remained, remained stable. Um, there were a few resignations early on. So a few families moved out of the area to more remote places because they didn't feel safe in, in Portland. It had nothing to do with us, it had to do with their own safety. Um, there were some families with children who made hard decisions about how much time they wanted their kids on Zoom with supplemental schooling. Um, nobody was turned away due to financial hardship, but that's always our policy. If people said, I'm struggling, we said, we'll give you the year. Don't, don't, let it, don't lose touch, stay part of this community, which they did. Um, we gained new members during a pandemic year, amazingly, and we have more potentials waiting in the wings. And, Two memberships became one, obviously, when Melissa and Richard got married. So again, mazel tov, we can't say it enough. Um, the Chesed group, as I mentioned, kept us connected. The streamed services transitioning to Zoom kept people more connected as well. Um, and the again, High Holy Day services just were so polished and lovely. And the Minyanim, there has been some requests that some of these programs remain hybrid. So it might be that you know, one or two minion meetings a week, stay on Zoom and one's in person. So we shall see. Oh, and did we mention that we conducted a successful rabbinic search in a pandemic year completely virtually? Um, it's like, you know, saying, saying yes to a future spouse without ever having met them in person. Although luckily we did have a chance to meet Rabbi Oren before the, the deal was sealed. Um, so let's say a huge, huge thanks to Anne Levant Prawl who took leadership of that search committee, that committee made up of wonderful people, smart, smart people. I could not have, have well, I did pick them, but I couldn't have picked better people to help lead the search. And we welcome Rabbi Oren. And now hopefully all this technology will work. I'm going to stop the share of this screen because Rabbi Oren has sent us a little video message. So let me see here. Hello, my Shalom Aleichem. Greetings, everyone, all my holy friends at Congregation Shari Torah. I'm grateful to join you at this moment of reflection and celebration and transition. My family and I are very excited to be joining you very soon. 
Um, I'm joining you by video because as you see, the boxes are packed and the movers will be here exactly at the moment when you're holding your meeting. Um, we really can't wait to get to know each other, uh, to know you and for you to know us. And, and so I'm gonna ask you to, to don't be a stranger. Your, your synagogue has been incredible about the mitzvah of of welcoming me and my family in and making us feel uh, so welcome. And I wanna do the same for you. So please visit, come on Shabbat when you feel comfortable. Uh, my office door will be open. My phone is available. Come for a program, join me out in the community to make it our, uh, to do a mitzvah to make our, our, our neighborhoods better. Um, but for today and, and your annual meeting, I just wanna take a moment to say thank you. Thank you to uh, the leadership of our shul, especially to Anne and the search committee. Uh, I appreciate so much your kindness and your menschlichkeit. I want us to take a moment to recognize all of our incredible staff and say uh, how excited I am to work with you and to create with you and to serve this community. And then I would be remiss without taking a moment uh, to recognize Rabbi Rose. Um, it has been so clear in all of my encounters with the members of Shari Torah and community members, uh, how much you have given um, and given so generously of your heart and your soul to walk with this community. I, I, I know you know, but I want you to know that you always have a home here. So the ways in which your family, when and if, how they choose to, to participate, um, Shari Torah is here for you and we, uh, you always have a place with us. Um, and then I really just wanna bless you to know the way you have touched people's hearts and how you have brought this community closer to Torah and closer to God and closer to Israel. And I pray that you continue to grow souls um, in your next endeavors and um and i know that you'll do that so i pray and i bless all of us that you rabbi rose and all of us at shari torah go from strength to strength i say amen and i'll see you in a couple weeks thank you everyone i hope that played that i wasn't the only one watching it Good, excellent, very nice. So let me just throw up the, the next bit. Oh, I have to give credit to Nadav Oren. That's Rabbi Gary and, and Sharon's 12 year old son who took the little video and put it into iMovie and added the music and the, and the opening and closing credits. So I was told I had to give a shout out to Nadav for that. So there I have done. Um, let's see, back to our, our slideshow. So just really quickly, just to give a, a, a by our numbers. So the breakdown by age, and this is very, very typical of most congregations, not, not just Jewish congregations, but worship, houses of worship in, in general, the, the 65, you know, an up group makes up the majority, but we've got a nice up and coming group over here in the 50 to 64 range. And I now count among those, I am proud to say. Um, so there is, there is, there will always be a, a trend this way, but we who are in this lower graph will continue to age and will someday become the higher branch. Um, overall, a net loss of eight members, but we have more coming in and we also had a number of sadly deaths in the congregation, which will always hit our numbers. But our members care and our members participate. And if you look at our, our percentage who show up, compared to a congregation much, much larger than ours who can't always count on a minion, we have a higher percentage of, of participation. And that's always struck me as just being something really, really phenomenal. Um, I'm going to continue to share the, the slideshow, but Daniel is going to take over with narrating for this next bit. So uh, I'm gonna mute myself and Daniel, you take the floor, please. Uh, getting back to the board of directors, um, you'll see us here at our uh, little retreats where we were getting the skills to work together. Uh, we are bringing in uh, two new directors this year, uh, Allison Fowler and Eva Selnick. You see them on, on your screen now. 
um, I am going to have to stick very closely to the script to avoid covering them in way too many superlatives, but these women are just amazing leaders with great uh, minds and um, and I, I, I so very much appreciate the work that they did this year in uh, helping us with the uh, rabbi search committee and Anyway, uh, Eva Selnick on your left there uh, has been a member of Congregation Shere Torah for the last se seven years. She works as an epidemiologist specializing in infectious disease uh, when she's not taking care of her two children and husband. Her older daughter is currently in the religious school program and her son will be joining the religious school program next year. In her spare time, Eva loves going to the beach with her family spending time with friends and family, cooking and enjoying Portland. Allison Fowler, on your right, has been a member of Congregation Sherry Torah for about seven years. She had her bat mitzvah at Sherry Torah in 2019, and with God's help, her daughter will have hers in 2021. During COVID, Allison has been, learned to play chess, learn Torah tropes, and some new jump rope tricks. Allison lives in Southwest Portland with her husband, daughter, and she says too many dogs, but I might argue that. Uh, I'd also like to spend a moment to thank our outgoing board members. Um, these uh, three folks I've been working with for the last few years on the board are just also likewise absolutely amazing. Uh, Tamir Heyman, you can see his uh, a little little sliver of his wife, Yafit, there, uh, has served for since uh, 2017 on the Building and Grounds Committee, the Finance Committee, the Ad, Ad Hoc Security Committee, and the Ad Hoc Reopening Committees. Uh, he has also been our Schulz, uh JCRC representative uh, for 2019 and 2020. Linda Niemer Singer in the middle, uh, served as Sherry Torah's first female president in the early 2000s and has held the prior board positions before that. She's returned to the board in 2017 for two terms, uh, one as vice president, and has served this year on the nominating committee and has um, also organized multiple special events. Rob Sturtz is on your right there. Uh, joined the board in 2020. He served on the nominating and finance committees. He and his wife, Sarah, are beloved members of the community, and we very much regret that they'll be moving away soon. <sighs> anyway, um, we have a list of, there we go. So this is our, um, this is the list of our current uh, board of directors, uh, plus the two new uh, directors that have been proposed. And we'd like to put up a poll to vote on this, these, uh, this slate of directors. So please, uh, in your uh, Zoom uh, program, please uh, vote to accept yay or nay to uh, acknowledge these, uh, these directors. I suppose I should probably read them, read off the, the list for, uh, for those who might be on small, small screen on um, small displays. There we go. Um, so uh, as I mentioned, the new directors, Eva Selnick and Allison Fowler, uh, we have uh, four directors who are reelected to a two year term for 2021 and 2020 through 2023. And that will be Mitch Cohen, Darren Horowitz, Peter Lyman and Rafi Rosenblatt. Uh, directors continuing their uh, to your term, um, is Mitch Cohen, um, oh, Melissa Cohen, there we go, uh, myself, Daniel Petcher, and Sarah Staggs, and then um, I mentioned our retiring directors, there's a, um, Jimmy, you've got the, I think you've got the voting panel in front of, of the list here, so I've only been guessing at these names from partial, there we go. You've got them right, and I can go ahead and tell you that we had over 80% respondents with 100% in favor. Ah, okay. Alrighty then. That makes that part easy. Um, so anyway, uh, then we can uh, move to the next slide and present. This would be our 
full roster of your board for the coming year. So officers, Daniel Petcher, myself, the president, Sarah Staggs, our vice president, Rafi Rosenblatt is our secretary, Peter Lyman is our treasurer and he also serves as our immediate past president. Directors include Eva Selnick, Melissa Cohen, Mitch Cohen, no relation, uh, Allison Fowler, Darren Horowitz, and uh, representatives from the auxiliary groups, uh, Andrea, Andrea Hurdy, um, uh, Sisterhood President, uh, Rick Cohen is our men's club representative. And then uh, alongside the, the board itself, we have uh, some of our busier committees include uh, the cemetery committee headed by Steph Kotkins, the uh, Chesed committee headed by Annette Dempsey and Leslie Baird, and the finance committee uh, and nominating committee, both uh, headed by Peter Lyman. And I guess the next item on the agenda is to introduce uh, Sharon Pollan, who will give us an update on the education department. And at I'll this point, I'm going to stop share on this uh, slide deck because Sharon, being Sharon, pr uh, produced her own. So I'm going to put hers up and she will walk us through it. Thanks, Jemmy. Hi, everybody. Um, uh, thanks, thanks so much for your time. It's a pleasure for me to be here. And I just kind of want to give you a quick overview of what this year has been like for um, the education program. And I would say that it has been uh, small yet mighty uh, in a nutshell. So, and I want to thank so, so much, first of all, Jemmy for her kind support and Linda for hers and Alana for hers and most especially Amber who was with me every single class session because I couldn't learn how to zoom and share slides and make and and show videos all at the same time and the 10 year olds were trying to, to teach me but I failed so um, you know it's always a really good thing as an adult to try to to put yourself in a situation where you're asking children to learn new things and you remind yourself about how hard it can be sometimes and how vulnerable that experience is. So um, I was really lucky to have such a great group around me. And thank you, especially to Josh Rose, Joshy, and um, who, uh, you know, gave me the support and the, the spiritual support that this is on the right path. And these are the kinds of things that we're hoping that the kids can come away with despite the unique nature of this year. So what a pleasure, how lucky I am. So the next slide uh, is just at the glance here. This is what we offered. This is what we had. Um, again, small but mighty, those children did come uh, mostly consistently. And so given all of the challenges of this year, I think that you all can feel proud of yourselves um, that the program carried on. And people were telling me that it wasn't that they didn't wanna be there, but there was just so much screen time. And so, you know, call a kavod to these, these 12 families with the 18 kids who could make it happen. Next, please. I wanted to give you um, really kind of the background bit of the work that I'm doing to create the foundation. And when I plan, I use a strategy called understanding by design. And I wanted to just give you a little sense of what that looks like and what the shul will own um, at the end of my tenure. And this is a sample of a piece of curriculum this is K2, and you'll notice that there's always a, a big idea and an essential question it's called. In this case, it's how can I help repair the world? And an essential question is something that you and I can understand and also a young child can understand or a person any age can understand. These are kind of the core, as I, you know, we say, essential ideas um, that go along with an, a, a core concept about about 
what we understand as Jews and what we value. And so then it has a, you know, a little lesson plan along with it. And, and what we did, one of the things that I really, really tried to do very um, diligently because of Zoom was just so ugh, awful, um, was incorporate hands-on activities for almost every single thing. And that really got the kids engaged. And, you know, honestly, for me, one of my big ideas was how can I keep these kids happy and connected to one another and to Judaism over this crazy year? So you'll see, you know, that all of those notes are there. So let's take a look at another example. And again, this is, oh, it did it itself. I, you know, I don't have to do, but here's an example for a slightly older group. The third and fourth graders were together. And so again, the essential question and what are, what are the concepts? Every individual can make a difference. Every single action counts. And then there are different um, categories of mitzvot. And as I noted um, uh, in the, uh, uh, the children grasped it so quickly that they so understood the difference between um, doing something for an individual and then something that was between them and God. And they were able to do all kinds of wonderful um, examples. And anyway, so these are the notes that, that uh, will accompany everything. And finally, I wanted just to show you, um, go on to the next slide, please, Jemmy. Um, we had the pleasure of working with somebody from um, the Oregon Jewish Museum and the Center for Holocaust Education who gave, and, and he did this for um, MLK Day. And it was absolutely beautiful and um, brought together all kinds of um, you know, broader concepts that help to connect us, um, you know, with others who may not look or uh, believe exactly as we do in terms of our, you know, actual religion and what that's called. And yet we all share so many um, character traits together. And um, it was, it was just great. So I was really happy to be able to do that. And finally, um, every week, the parents received um, a note home from their teachers. Uh, three of them were me. And one was our wonderful Alex Mansfield, who was teaching the seventh graders. And what we tried to do was make sure that the parents had a pathway in as well. So that if they were you know, interested in what are my kids learning or can I talk about these things with my children a little bit, they would have the resources um, to do that. So th that was the structure um, that we used. And again, all of this is archived for um, the future. And lastly, well, actually, it's not lastly, but um, beginning plan um, uh, to plan for the coming year, we sent out a pretty detailed uh, survey that had a good response. Parents overwhelmingly want to meet in person and are open to hybrid. So to come together on the weekends um, with once a month on Shabbat so that we can do Shabbat together um, as a family uh, community or with the children and then the rest of the time on Sundays and um, with a hybrid really offering um, various Zoom electives over the course of the year um, for all of the grades. Um, Alex Mansfield, I'm so, so happy to say has agreed to serve as our upper school coordinator and he's kind of figuring out what that's gonna look like. He's had a ton of experience all over the place and the kids that he has been working with, A, adore him, which that has to happen first and think that he's like super cool and, um, and smart and fun and has all these great ideas and also effective. So I'm, I'm really um, delighted about that. And you know, we'll keep you posted. I do very much wanna meet with Rabbi Oren before we put anything out or set anything in stone because ultimately um, 
you know, I and the program are a conduit, you know, for his vision as well. And then my final little thing is that this is this has been a guide post for me this year that um, Rabbi Jonathan Sachs, Oliver Sholem, you know, who, who recently passed away, said, we are as great as the challenges we have the courage to undertake. And I thank all of you for the courage that you have shown and that you have shared with me so that we can move forward and um, you know that that you have demonstrated how very precious is our heritage and it has not been an easy time to walk that walk and yet we've done it so call it kavod and thank you very much I was muted. <laughs> Thank you so much, Dr. Sharon Polin. I, I can't say enough how happy I am, how happy we are that you agreed to, to join us last year and that you agreed to stay on for another year to help guide and mold and craft this program. I mean, on a very personal note, I've shared with you, I, I see you as a mentor and you know I've turned to you and some of my hardest days and I so appreciate your, your guidance and your wisdom. And I just hope the rest of the community understands how fortunate we are to have her in our midst. So thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, and I'm not even gonna go into the compelling mother piece of it at all, separating myself from that. As long as I'm thinking, um, uh, Dr. Sharon, I do wanna just turn a, a, a quick spotlight to our small but mighty staff. Um, I inherited some really phenomenal people, have added another phenomenal person, we, um, I mean, I could, we could not do this, and I know you all know of the brilliance of, of Linda and, and now Leslie by her side, um, keeping that office you know, running throughout a closure. And it has shown us that a synagogue office does not need to be open for all the hours that tradition, you know, historically has been open for to be able to be effective and keep a shul running. Um, Leslie um, has been working from home, even though it's a few blocks away, you know, continuing with the chesed outreach and with, you know, she fields phone calls, I can't even tell you how many. So does Linda, so do I, everyone has our, our cell numbers, it seems. Um, and, and you know, Linda is just the, the, I don't know, the cornerstone. She knows everybody and everyone and always there with caring support. Um, our Jackie Van Anda, who is going to be traveling next month, but has someone, you know, filling her, her large shoes for the next month uh, to keep us afloat. You know, has kept up with the barrage of, you know, thank God, checks and payments and requests and statements remotely and in person. Um, and Ilana and Amber, we could not do without. I don't know if you've all looked at our website lately, but it is phenomenal. It is one of the things we heard throughout the rabbinic search as candidates were checking us out the same way we were checking them out. So many came back saying we've never seen such a professionally designed and produced website as what you have, and they continue to update it. So, I mean, big, big snaps and, and claps for, for that dynamic duo. Um, our cemetery crew, their work never stopped, sadly. Um, they were really unaffected by pandemic, except that the chapel wasn't being used. Um, so Bill and Leo, and now their, their protege, Devin, who is working under their tutelage to eventually move up into an assistant position. Continued working, Tatiana was in our building, keeping its you know, spit spot throughout the year. Irina, sadly, we haven't gotten to taste any of her delicious food, but she has agreed to come back and will be cooking for us again and sharing her, her love through her food soon. I'm not making any date promises. And of course, Alexi, we could not run without him. Um, he's been able to do little projects around the building, um, maintain everything, keep us secure, because that's been a big concern, and is altogether um, you know, an absolute wonder, and I'm so blessed to, to work with him in partnership. So I just wanted to give a little shout out there to our phenomenal staff. Um, it's time to introduce Peter Lyman, our treasurer, who's going to talk us through our financials. So I will, again, Put up the uh, the um, Thank you me. slideshow. You so here we go. And just Peter, tell me when you want to. 
Okay, I will. Let's get to the financials. Next slide. Okay, so uh, just reflecting on the last fiscal year, if you recall, we had two budgets, one that we presented uh, to the annual board meeting in, in June with a proviso that we would come back in December uh, with a revised budget uh, for approval. And um, that's the procedure we followed then. And we will be time out too, given the uncertainty on uh, COVID uh, or reopening. I could characterize last year as far as financial. We live to fight another day. Um, the generosity uh, of our congregants during this very trying and stressful time was, was, was truly amazing. Um, a lot of folks stepped up and uh, paid enhanced dues last year. Uh, we had some significant um, Yom Kippur uh, pledges that were made. I'd like to call out the sisterhood again for uh, the proceeds from the uh, Hamantash and uh, uh, sales in 2019. Uh, they are largest uh, contributors to the Yom Kippur. And then the icing on the cake was they stepped up and gave us, I believe, $7,500 to visual equipment. Uh, once we uh, started live streaming and and, uh, and and zooming the services, so the generosity was 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 above and beyond what that initial budget had uh, uh, anticipated. Um, the second thing uh, were grants. Um, Jemmy really hustled uh, to get that first uh, PPP loan uh, through our bank. And I believe that was about $125,000 uh, uh, that came in the door. We had an additional $15,000 grant uh, that again, Jimmy applied to the uh, Greater Jewish Federation of Portland. And so brought that in as well. Uh, we also had some FEMA grants. You, driven by the shul, you can see the new fencing uh, and so forth. And again, uh, thanks to Jemmy, those, uh, those went uh, through FEMA. We did the uh, enhanced security work and, um, and we got reimbursed. So generosity grants, um, we lucked out with uh, Pipster. Uh, they needed an additional uh, two or three rooms, I think, upstairs uh, starting uh, uh, in January as the state of Oregon kind of expanded the preschool uh, coverage. We were in a position to uh, uh, grant that request, and I believe that was an additional 12000 uh, that we hadn't anticipated. Um, and the other thing... The final one on that was the Lano. Surprisingly, even though they were uh, on and off uh, for several months, they honored their contract and uh, we received our, our monthly payments from Milano, uh, which again, we, uh, we weren't sure whether, whether we were going, uh, whether we were gonna get. So those three things on the revenue side, um, and then the other significant thing was the reduction in, in operating expenses. Um, cut back on staff hours, uh, since we were not utilizing the, uh, the facility as intensely as we uh, would under normal circumstances. Uh, definitely reduced utility costs since the uh, air conditioner is no longer working. So that is saving us on the water. Uh, uh, and electric bills. So combined with all of that, um, our latest estimate is that we will finish the year roughly uh, with a $79,000 surplus. I wouldn't get too wedded to that number. Jackie has yet to close the books on June, 
There are a lot of moving parts here as far as uh, how our investments in OJCF uh, end up at the end of June, uh, where the cemetery uh, ends up, and uh, where we are on uh, outstanding dues, uh, dues payments. But I think it's safe to say we are going to end up positive for the year. Um, so in that sense, that's good. We did a lot better than we thought. But I think Peter, if I may, we have already yeah. we have mm -hmm. already transferred back the money to OJCF investment right. funds that were drawn right. the year before. And right. we were able right. to add more to the cemetery fund because there was a surplus in that budget. So that 76,000 you see down here. That's right. already gone back into our investment funds. Okay, because I, I don't know if folks remember at the beginning of the fiscal year, I was concerned about our cash flow position and the building fund at OJCF and 35,000 uh, out of the cemetery fund. So that has been returned plus whatever surplus the uh, cemetery is, is, is projected to uh, uh, to get this year. So whatever we borrowed from ourselves uh, has now been repaid. But one thing I think we need to consider here is if you think about, yes, we ended up with a, with a surplus where we would have been without the, the uh, PPP loans, the grant from the uh, grant from the Federation, uh, so forth. So it would have been uh, uh, different picture uh, had those uh, not occurred. Cash-wise, we're in good shape. I think the last uh, numbers I saw from Jackie, well in excess of 250,000 in the checking account. So I don't have to stay up nice wondering about, about that. Let's talk, and as you can see here, Jimmy's showing the slide here. This is kind of typical for us. Roughly 70% of our expenses are, uh, are, are basically personnel. Okay, so that includes all the clergy and, and uh, the professional staff that we have in place. Uh, I want to show the next one. So let's talk a little bit about where we are for next year. Uh, again, what I'm going to be asking for is acceptance of a preliminary um, budget uh, at this meeting with the promise that we will come back in December and uh, have an updated budget that we will ask for approval on. Again, typically the first six months, I don't know, we see about 75% of our, of our revenues uh, uh, already uh, come in the door. So we'll have a pretty good uh, view on, on, on the revenue side and, uh, and the expense side. This year's budget uh, includes the second PPP loan, which I believe was 130,000. I'm not mistaken, Jimmy. That went on the books. We got the, we got the check back April and May. It went on the books as a loan. We fully anticipate like the first loan, it will be converted into a grant. So that is uh, included here on the income side. Um, we have fundraising in again this year, which we did not last year. Uh, again, there was, uh, there was no Milt Carl event or NEMA award and so forth. So we've, uh, we've included uh, an additional 40,000 uh, as far as um, you know, fundraising, quote unquote, fundraising activities uh, uh, on that. Um, on the expense side, uh, the costs associated with uh, with personnel has gone up. Uh, that's because we're, this budget anticipates us ramping up uh, to full steam here uh, over the year. So the hours that have been uh, reduced over the previous fiscal year are going to be returned. Um, we also get the uh, uh, staff that were not under contract. So basically, uh, salary folks would get a 3% cost of living increase. Uh, they hadn't had any, uh, I think in about two years. 
So and that 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 adds and you know, it adds additional seven thousand or eight thousand uh, over on the expense side. So at the end of the day, here right now, we're projecting uh, a deficit of about a hundred and eleven thousand uh, dollars. So we will definitely have our challenges uh, uh, next year. Uh, what gives me confidence is, is I'll make a few comments. One is um, the quality of the board members that we have this year uh, have just been truly outstanding. I've, I've served on a couple of boards at Shari Torah, and I, you know, maybe I'm biased, but I think these guys are um, absolutely the best board I've ever served on. That and Rabbi Oren, uh, who I you know, just an amazing uh, individual. I've had some conversations with him already uh, about fundraising, uh, reaching out to, you know, uh, congregants, so forth. And he, he is ready, to, he's already started, uh, I know, meeting, meeting with the congregants, but he sees fundraising as an important of his job. So, you know, I'm, I'm feeling pretty confident that we will we can we can make progress uh, closing that projected eleven thousand uh, dollar deficit. Um, and you know these are these were some of the stretch goals. I think Jackie put you know keep poor and 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 dues. So um, it does raise though some this you know I want to summarize by year that we really have to get the machinery in place and execute on it uh, to get us to a, a, a stable financial situation. And as I said, I am, I am confident we can do that um, uh, with the board, with the talents of the board. I mean, Jimmy's just been amazing. And uh, uh, Rabbi Oren, we increase and, you know, we get to increase the number of families, more fundraising and so forth. I, you know, I think we get there. The large overhanging issue, and again, I have a conversation, I will be having a conversation with Rabbi Oren, is that we absolutely have to initiate a capital campaign. Uh, we just had the boiler inspect, and I think we're good for two years, Jemmy. So on the heating side, that's great, but we have no air conditioning. And you could imagine what it would be like there right now if we had the board, the annual meeting in the social hall, uh, so that has to be fixed, and we've got some ideas that uh, want to flow with Rabbi Warren to to get going on that. So I think we've got the talent in place, and then we we just have to execute on it. So, so I'm going to put up the polling for voting on the provisional budget, Peter. So I'm going to launch it right now. Yeah, and if any folks have any specific questions, they can just shoot them to Jemmy and I can I can get more into the weeds. We're about 60% through on the polling. We'll give it a few more seconds to let people vote. And with 75% voting, we have a 95% yay. So I would say okay. that, that has passed. And so we, as we said, we will revisit the budget after Q2 right. closes. So right. thank, thank you so much, Peter. And again, if there are questions, they can get thrown into the chat there. I have not been looking. Amber, is there anything that we should be addressing that's in the chat that's come up? Uh, you covered the air conditioning, um, yeah. mm -hmm. which was a big question. Uh, that's pretty much all. <laughs> OK. Thank you. And thank we'll, you. Have to, we'll have to get an update on the estimates. Um, but I, you know, ballpark, you're probably looking at 800,000. And that's for the entire HVAC system, not just the air conditioning. So right, right. boiler yeah. and- Total everything. overhaul of everything. Total overhaul, yes. Yep. 
Mm-hmm. All right. Thank you so much, Peter. Um, yeah. Thank you, Jamie. Thank you. So it's that time in our meeting when our thoughts turn to Rabbi Rose, who is officially stepping down off our bima. This Wednesday is his last official day, and um, it's been it's been you know. A, I, I know it's been strange for him. It's been strange for us that it's been a remote year. It was so important to get him back onto his Vima for the last month. Uh, thank you to all those who've been coming to services, um, tentatively taking off your masks as you are vaccinated and feel comfortable to do so. It took me until last week to feel comfortable and feel that I was back in community. And the meeting at the park for that picnic to celebrate him was so, so special. Um, but we, we couldn't pass up the opportunity, Rabbi, I hope you have tissues ready, to ask people to submit some video thoughts. And hopefully this will play as I share my screen. And here we go. Thank you, Rabbi Rose, for being our rabbi. You are one of the most creative rabbis I've ever met. And it's remarkable to me because you are a seventh generation rabbi and it, it's almost like you broke the mold. How did you do this? Thank you. Hello, Rabbi Rose. Thank you from the Penner family for everything you've done for us over the past few years, including the bar mitzvahs of both of our boys. We wish you the best in your next adventures. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you very much. Thank you. you the best in all your future endeavors. Thank you for being our rabbi. Hey, Rabbi Rose, just wanted to say thank you so much for everything over the last few years. I joined the synagogue because of you and our connection, and it's been absolutely wonderful to have you be a part of all of the events in my life over the last few years. And thank you so much for everything you've done for the community, for always being unapologetically yourself and continuing to grow and change and be on this lifelong journey uh, alongside all of us. And I look forward to continuing to connect and strengthening our relationship over the years to come. Rabbi Rose, you have been so kind, so thoughtful, so generous, and so wise. Uh, I have come to greatly, greatly appreciate you as our rabbi. I'm so sorry to see you go. Uh, and I hope you and Hannah and the kids have nothing but uh, success and nachas. And I hope to continue to learn from you and to see you in our community. All the best. Rabbi Rose, you've been such a great rabbi to our family. You've been a wise teacher and a trusted advisor, and we sure are going to miss you at Congregation Sherry Torah. Amelia and I are really glad that you and Hannah and the boys are sticking around in town, and we look forward to being a part of your next adventure. 
I'm Rabbi Rose. You've been my rabbi my whole childhood, and I'm sure going to miss you. Hello, Rabbi Rose. We have known you for only about three and a half years, but to us, you will always be the rabbi that we consider our rabbi. Thank you for all that you've done for us and for Shari Torah. Thanks for being so welcoming and friendly. And thanks for all of the classes and for so seamlessly and beautifully representing the traditional and the contemporary and Jewish thinking and for saying, I don't know when you don't know. Thanks for getting our congregation through the coronavirus pandemic as a cohesive community. Thanks for the hearty Boker Tov when starting <laughs> Minyan in classes, and thanks for the wonderful and spiritual Nusach during your morning Minyans. Thanks for being such a great mensch and rabbi. Yashakoa. I really appreciated how you reacted when I told you that I was a convert. Thank you. We wish you all the best in your future endeavors. Shalom the Hitraot. Charlene and Mickey Stockler. Good evening, Rabbi Josh. I just want to say goodbye and let you know how much I'll really miss you. And one thing I wanted to say was I wanted to remind you of how we met. We somehow wandered into the synagogue during the annual members meeting and you came up to us right away and introduced yourself to us and we just thought you were wonderful. And the rest of the congregation, or at least some very lovely members, came and also introduced themselves, and that was it. Every time we came into Portland, we came to your synagogue. We loved having you as our rabbi. We knew it. We knew we were home. We've always looked for our rabbi. We've always looked for our congregation, and it was here. So I want to thank you for leading us that way. And after six years, it's been wonderful. I was enchanted by your three little boys. At least one was still in diapers when I met them. They were all over each other and loved each other so much. And I just delighted in having them. And your beautiful wife, too. I will miss you more than I can say. I couldn't agree more with everything my wife says. For a change, I agree with everything she said. But I want to tell you my own special story an image that will remain for me for the rest of my life. One day, uh, not too long since we'd been here, we were davening in the small chapel, and your dad was here. And he stood up uh, by the bima, and you and he had their arms around each other, and then your son Eliab came up and put his arm around you and you were right in the middle of the three rose generations, and you nearly lost it, just like anybody else would have nearly lost it, because it was such an emotional thing that happened to you. And I will never, ever forget it. It's an image that has always stayed with me. Thank you. Thank you for everything you've done. Thank you for being my friend. I love you, brother, and you take care, and everything you do will be wonderful and maybe sometime we could do something together. Rabbi Rose, Joshi, I want to thank you so much for the thrill that you gave me for knowing that you were returning to Portland and coming to Shira Torah. You have truly changed my spiritual life, has been devoted to what you do and what you say. I love to hear your drashas every Saturday. They're meaningful to me. Your life, your kids growing up, Hannah, and everything about you. I wish you the best of luck in your new endeavor. I'm so glad that it's going to be in Portland and it's a perfect, you are a perfect person and it's a perfect place for you. I look forward to your leadership with others. Thank you, thank you, thank you.
Hi, Rabbi Rose. This is Rick Cohen. And Ellen. And uh, we want to thank you so much for be becoming our rabbi. I remember very well many years ago when we brought you on board. And we have truly cherished the innovative programming that you've brought to our congregation and the kindnesses you've bestowed upon our family. Mm -hmm. I wish you the best of luck in the future. I'm sure wherever you land, it'll be great, and they'll be lucky to have you. Thank you so much for all your creative spirit, all the fun times that we had, the wonderful music, the concerts, the Devarim that you had for Shabbos, all of the classes we had. Thank you, thank you, thank you. All the best to you and your beautiful wife and family. Thank you for the beautiful Hamilton shows that we did, all of these fun things. We'll always remember these. Love you. Take very, very good care. You should only know great success for all the beautiful things that you want to do. So obviously, it's a big show of love from a lot of people. And there's one more person who wanted to give a special, special message. He couldn't be here with us today. So I have one more video to share. Rabbi Joshua Rose. Josh, I've known you since you were a little boy. And I can tell you so proud of your career and what you've done and accomplished and how your career has touched so many lives. While I was excited about your coming back to Portland and being rabbi of Sheriff Torah, I'm excited now for you with the new adventure you're on. You've listened to your heart and uh, the path ahead of you is gonna be interesting and we all look forward to participating with you and continuing to have you be our teacher and our mentor. So thank you for your years of Sheriff Torah. Thank you for helping us like Moses, help Sheriff Torah get to the next level of the promised land. Best luck to you for all your future endeavors. I'm proud of you, honored to call you a friend, and it's been wonderful having you as my rabbi. Thank you. And it was just so important that Jordan have a chance to send a message to you since he was instrumental in bringing you to Portland. Um, so now I had to find you on my screen so we can spotlight you because that magic moment has, a, has arrived when you finally get to break the seal on the present after Daniel says a few words to you. So let me find Daniel here too. Where's Daniel? Oh, and of course, I was on mute. <laughs> there we go. So El Presidente. Rabbi Rose, you've been just amazing, an amazing rabbi, an amazing friend for so many years. Uh, I've, uh, you've taught me to wrap fill in. You've just, you've just been, uh, wonderful for my family and for our congregation in general. And I, yeah, words, yeah, they're, they're good stuff. Uh, <laughs> I um, wanted to, I, I'm delighted to be able to present to you on behalf of the congregation, this token of our, our very great esteem for you and our continued wishes for your uh, your success and for uh, your continuing to um, to go from strength to strength and uh, to love your family, to love your community. And yeah, words are really not doing well for me today. Okay, <laughs> uh, so you are uh, invited to uh, open up the, the, the gift that we've uh, given you and uh, First of all, your grateful thanks. Your words were perfect and heartfelt, and that's what matters. And so the other day, uh, we the um, the search committee had a celebration and um, marking the end of their work and the beginning of this new phase of the life of the congregation. And when I was there, Jemmy said, "Take this and don't open it." And there's a little thing on the back that says, "Don't open until the 27th." So I was very, very good 
I've uh, sussed out that it might be a basketball or a bowling ball, but I'm going to check it out. Oh my God, are you kidding me? Oh, I love it. It's, uh, it's this oh, okay. David Friedman. Oh my gosh. So this, oh, I mean, it's just stunning. This was the, uh, those who have learned with me um, or have daubened with us over the last year are having flashbacks right now because this was my Zoom picture for a long time. This was my, you know, when you, when you click your, uh, <clears throat> when, you, when you turn off the video and you have a little icon. So if I do this, right now I have that little picture, but I used to have that picture and it's a representation of the Jewish mystical system. It's a color representation of the spherot. And it is so gorgeous, just stunning, and like right up my alley. And it's, I mean, there's something so perfect about that from real life into the Zoom world where I shared it with all of you and used it in my teaching. And now it's back with us right there. Hannah's already figured out where it's going to go. <laughs> Absolutely stunning. Um, I really don't know what to say. As you well know, I'm rarely at a loss for words. I'm actually never at a loss for words because I'll find any excuse to uh, share my words, whether they're uh, valuable or not. But um, I want to say there's just, I mean, my heart is so full at this moment, and I'm so profoundly moved by your words and what you've shared with me. Um, Having been on uh, the design end of some of those things, I know that a video like that is extraordinarily difficult to put together. Um, I was delighted to see that two people who I really, really love were involved in the editing of it. Gavriel Kedem, who's such a little sneaky guy, I didn't even know. He's somewhere in our house right now. Um, mm -hmm. And I didn't even know he was involved with that in Alana, the editing. And Jemmy, I can only imagine you were hurting the cats for that. Thank you, everybody, for your gorgeous, gorgeous words. So um, it wouldn't be like me unless I asked your indulgence to share some thoughts. Um, and I'm going to do that now. And I'm going to try to keep it short because it's already a long meeting and it's a hot day and you all need to be drinking water and chilling out in front of the AC. Um, but I want to just share these reflections at this really important moment in my life and in my family's life. Um, and in my dog's life. And so um, uh, bear, bear with me. The very first communication that I ever sent to the congregation um, was in a, uh, I believe it was in the first newsletter that came out right after I started. And in that newsletter, um, I quoted Rabbi Jonah Geller of Blessed Memory um, because Rabbi Jonah Geller, um, at some point very early in Rabbi Geller's career, he wrote of Sherry Torah, so this must have been, I'm guessing, his first or second year, he wrote that Sherry Torah had a marvelous opportunity, quote unquote, that the synagogue had uh, to create, this is a quote, to create a thriving, modern, traditional synagogue, thriving, modern, traditional synagogue. And let me, let me just share some words about where the synagogue is going and something for this congregation to reflect upon that I think is very, very important. So um, I want to start with that phrase, thriving, modern, traditional, and I want to take the words in reverse order. A traditional synagogue. Well, I want to say, and this is, I talked about this differently in my first bulletin article to you than I have now, and I want you to really think about that, think about what I'm going to say. Because now I would say that we are traditional, but in a way that, uh, that I, that, in a very particular way. We're not traditional in the way that we once may have thought. So I'm going to say, are we traditional? Is Sherry Tor traditional? I'm going to say no and yes. So hear me out because I really think this is very important for all of you and for the work that the synagogue has to do in the world going forward. We are not traditional in the sense that we're not an Orthodox synagogue. We know that. We know that now. We're not a community, and this is strange to say, but it's important to say clearly because our Judaism can only fl flower when it is planted in the rich soil of truth. So we're not a community 
um, whose members by and large are prim who, whose who, whose members lives are by and large primarily determined by adherence to traditional Jewish law. Okay, that's not the shape of traditional that this synagogue is. I've come to learn. Jewish law plays a very important role in the lives of the congregants that I know the best and who are most deeply attached to the shul, and it will continue to do so. But our congregants do not have, by and large, the relationship to halakha, to traditional Jewish law, that Orthodox Jews and many traditional Jews have. So in that sense, we're not traditional. However, we are profoundly traditional in that we are a congregation um, filled with people who love the Jewish tradition, who take it seriously, who allow it to be a guide in their lives, who want to learn about the Jewish tradition because they want to bring more of it into their lives. We are traditional in that sense. And we should say that proudly, that we're, we are not traditional in the way that I think Rabbi Geller and previous generations understood that term, and probably even Rabbi Zuki who we still know and love and who flies into our lives periodically. We're not traditional in that sense. And I think that Sherry Torah needs to embrace that and be confident in the way in which we are traditional because then we will allow tradition to grow us. So this, the phrase was uh, thriving modern traditional synagogue. So we talked about traditional. Now I wanna say something about the modern part. Sherry Torah is now part, an important part of Portland's Jewish conversation, about the conversation of where the bulk of the Jewish community is going in our programs, in our services, in everything that we do, in our institutional partnerships, we are now a part of a very, very important Jewish conversation about what the next chapter of Portland's Jewish life is going to look like. And Sherry Torah has a seat at the communal table, so to speak, because we've demonstrated you have demonstrated, our professional staff has demonstrated that we can speak to people's Jewish needs and their Jewish interests in a way that bring the traditional and the modern together. For some of us, the kinds of conversations that an embrace of the contemporary moment bring us into, for some of us, it's new territory. For some of you, it's new territory. The synagogue will no doubt move into the kinds of programming and already has been at some of the uh, programming over the last several years that for some people is uncomfortable because it doesn't seem like what a tr traditional synagogue used to do. In other words, this is not your grandpa's synagogue or your grandma's synagogue. Um, but for others, these kinds of conversations and the new kind of programming and changes to the services um, are, are uh, long overdue and very, very, very welcome. But this space of embracing what we love about the tradition and seeking its guidance, but also embracing the possibilities of the moment, I've discovered that's who this synagogue really is. I have to confess that when I came, I thought this was a more traditional synagogue than I think we really are. We're traditional in the sense that I said, and we're firmly planted in the modern world in an emerging Jewish religious world that's unfolding. And I think we need to be proud about that. Um, but in order for us to embrace this space where the tradition meets the modern, which I think has always been the dynamic essential center of Jewish life. Um, and that's the place where the emerging world and the wisdom and the guidance of the Jewish past come together. For us to live, for Sherry Torah to live and thrive in that space, we have to embrace it. And so my message to those of you who are more comfortable with the modern contemporary world where things don't look like they did in the past, my challenge to you is to embrace the past, to learn about mitzvot, to learn about Torah and Torah study, and to go deep into traditional modalities of learning and living that maybe you've neglected or have not yet taken the opportunity to engage in. And to those of you who are more at home with the traditional and are a little uncomfortable by the new pattern and the new modern expressions of Judaism, I wanna challenge you to grow comfortable in new spaces with new experiments that Rabbi Oren may do or that the synagogue may, may find itself in the, in the middle of. Um, in other words, if everybody pushes their own edges and grows into it, incredible things can happen. So 
finally, that last adjective that I want to talk about is thriving, that adjective that Rabbi Geller used, thriving. As Peter Lyman said, and Peter, who deserves all kinds of accolades for his um, just endless giving of his time uh, to the synagogue and his leadership and his wisdom, this is the strongest board that has existed since I've been here. The board is younger, people with broad experience and knowledge of the Jewish world with fresh ideas about what can bring the synagogue into the future, and people who are seriously grappling with the question of what does it mean to be the synagogue of the future. This is the strongest volunteer base, not just the board, the strongest volunteer base that has been since I have uh, been at the shul. As the, as the search for the executive director, which was so successful, demonstrated, and the search committee for the new rabbi so successfully demonstrated. Incredible deep bench, to borrow a basketball term, a sports term, um, of, of volunteers and committed people that has existed since I have been here. It's the strongest staff that has existed since I have been here. We had a moment at the staff meeting the other day where we were thanking current and past staff members and remembering their contributions. We've had amazing people here, but the present staff under the incredible leadership of Jemmy is the strongest staff doing the most high level professional Jewish work that has existed far and away since I have been here. So we are a thriving shul. The synagogue has very real challenges ahead of it, financial and other challenges but we're most strongly positioned to face those challenges since any time since I have been here. And you should feel incredibly proud of your leadership, of yourselves, of your staff um, for that. So um, I just wanna, I wanna leave this part with one thing and then I have some thank yous to give out. I'm leaving synagogue life, as you know, but if someone were to come to Portland and say to me, where is it happening Jewishly in Portland? My answer would be, it's happening at Congregation Shari Torah. And um, with, a, with the synagogue having all of those assets that I said, and a fantastic, highly regarded, very exciting new rabbi who, as you can see, is a very, very deep mensch. He's the real deal, as I like to say about the, the Yidden, who I most respect. He's the real deal, and he's going to lead the shul into really wonderful places. Um, so this is the place where it's happening. And um, I, I just wanted to acknowledge that and have you spread the word. You should be proud of it. And word of mouth is the best way to plug people into synagogue life. Now, I know I'm speaking really quickly. Um, it's not the caffeine. It's that I'm trying to honor your time. Um, I have to thank several people here. And I, I know that you'll, you'll indulge me in this. Um, I have to thank, first of all, the board that brought me on because we've seen this incredible blossoming, as I was saying, into becoming a, the, the thriving shul that Rabbi Geller knew that Congregation Sherry Torah would be. Um, we see that now, but those seeds were planted before I came on the scene. Those seeds were planted by a board that knew it wanted to move in a new direction. And in particular, I wanna thank Rick Cohen, who's, uh, who, whose words and Ellen's words uh, were, were very beautiful in the video, but who was the co-president along with Jordan Schnitzer, who made the decision, the two of them together as co-presidents, to hire me. That whole board and those two presidents in particular. Um, to Jordan, I have to give a special thank you. Um, I can only hope that someday he'll see this when he's sitting around on his hands, as he tends to do, you know, with nothing to do. Um, he's got some extra time on his hands, and no doubt he'll put this at the top of his to-do list. But Jordan uh, has been extraordinary in my life, in Hannah's life, in my family's life and in the life of this synagogue. Um, many people whose stories are not being told at this moment have been generous with the synagogue and the synagogue um, has really relied on their generosity of time and dollars to, to move into the this, this position it's in now. But Jordan's generosity, as we all know, has been singular and extraordinary. And um, he's a guy whose heart beats with, with family and with tradition. Those who know him know that that's the case. And it's been his dream to see the synagogue flourish, and he's been able to help that be the case. And so I have to offer my personal gratitude for the opportunity to serve this magnificent community um, that Jordan has provided. I want to thank the staff, and I'm going to keep it short, not because they're not deserving, but because on Facebook and also in, in our Zoom staff meeting, um, I've had the opportunity to thank them for their unbelievable support of what I do. A lot of what the staff does is um, to take extraordinary steps to 
um, to prevent how unprofessional and chaotic my, my inner true self is and to hide that part. And um, they've just been wind under my wings, absolutely incredible. And with Jemmy's leadership and the heart that she brings to her work, it's just amazing to see them uh, flourish. Uh, I wanna thank those who have davened with me continually. You know who you are. And it's just added so much life to my life. It's in particular, when I was saying Kaddish for my dad, the first year, not only were you there at the Shiva, but that community that helped me make Kaddish every day. Um, I'm, I just have, you know, there's no words that can capture what that meant to me. And uh, I, I, I love you and I love you for davening with me on Shabbat and during the weekday. And I thank you, you know who you are. Those who have learned with me, what can I say? I said what I had to say in the meeting we had on Friday. Um, it's just opened my heart and you've taught me so much as, as my students, you have taught me as I shared with you in that beautiful Gemara we learned together. I have to thank my beautiful family. Um, Hannah in particular is the Rebetzin. It ain't easy being a Rebetzin. And this woman with a huge heart and a huge soul has brought so much good to, to the shul, but also to my life in uh, help holding me up and holding my work up in ways that uh, you all will, will never know because that's how rabbinic families work, but she was a, a great gift. Um, I have to thank my beautiful boys who always love going to shul and they always are asking me, Abba, will you please ask Sharon for more Hebrew school homework, please? We wanna learn more and more. Um, no, with their beautiful, honest, authentic, magnificent selves, they've brought so much light to my life and our lives and they've just been a joy. And I know how many, how many people in the shul have just felled over them. Um, my beautiful sisters are on this call. I'm looking at Melanie's face right now, Laura and Tanya are also here, um, their guidance and support in these, uh, encouraging me to, to be the best rabbi I can be, always holding me up, no matter what would befall me, it was always somebody else's fault and they would tell me that I was amazing and God's gift to the world. And uh, that sometimes you need, to, you need to hear that even when you know it ain't true. And my beautiful mama, uh, Lorraine, who's standing at attention there in the back, um, is the proudest mom ever. And everywhere she goes, she brings energy and light and enthusiasm. My greatest advocate, my counsel, um, the person who nudges me the most often, often inappropriately, and uh, always with a smile. Um, thank you, thank you, thank you to my family. So I leave with a very, very, very short teaching. I promise you, a very, very short teaching. Um, you have to know that I leave the shul with a full heart. Nobody could ever uh, live up to or deserve the kind of support that this congregation has given me um, ever, ever really have not would not nobody could ever merit that. So I can only thank God for the extraordinary and over the top uh, support and encouragement that this shul has given me. Um, even when I've butted heads with the board or individual congregants or had difficult moments, I've always been aware that this shul has just constantly said, go rabbi, go and lifted me and encouraged me and given me permission to run in all kinds of uh, directions that I thought were good for the shul. I'm just so grateful and I will not, literally won't be able to adequately express it because I'd have to sit down with each of you individually, which I can't do, but I want you to know that I am aware of it. So I will close with this from a place of a very, 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 very full heart. Um, and this teaching is about synagogues. So it says in the Gemara, Tanya Abba bin Yamin Omer, ain't bila shel adam nishma'at eli bebeita Knesset, which means there's a there's a teaching, there's a baraita, uh, a Mishnaic era teaching. And Abba bin Yamin, who's the name of a teacher, a rabbinic teacher of Mishnaic era, says that prayer is not heard unless it's not truly heard unless it is within a synagogue. So again, prayer is not heard unless it takes place within a synagogue. Now, this is crazy. What can this teaching mean? Because we know that in truth, God hears prayer from anyone, anywhere, at any time. We know that that's the truth, because God is deeply woven into the very fabric of reality. So what could, what could Abba Binyamin really, really mean about this? I think what Abba Binyamin is saying is that it's in shuls, it's in human community, it's among people together that the teachings of Torah come together. And it is with a rabbi and his or her students that the teachings can become, can find depth and can take root and be brought to life in the world. In other words, 
The synagogue is the locus of that magical place I was talking about earlier, where the wisdom and the roots of the tradition come together with the soil of new life in the contemporary moment and blossom into a shade giving growth uh, where life can take place and where blessing can come down into the world. That happens in a shul. So I'm a big believer in synagogue life. I think that this particular synagogue has a lot of life ahead of it. Ahead of it, If you embrace that and if we as a community really get that, and if you give Rabbi Oren, this beautiful soul who we've been lucky enough to draw uh, into our shul, if you give him the same kind of love and support and encouragement that you've given me, and you walk with him as you walk with me at this moment with this shul, the, the future is so bright and the city of Portland needs that kind of Torah. And you need the kind of tour that comes from that engagement. I thank you. I'm so grateful. And I look forward to uh, being able to still daven among you. I'll be back. I'm going to disappear for a while and give Rabbi Oren the space he needs um, to, to, set, to, to get settled and to bring his own family into this community. But I'll be around. We'll have opportunities to engage. And I thank you so much for everything you've meant to me and my whole family. Yes, Shakok, Rabbi Rose, thank you so much for your years of service and for your words for your words for today. Um, and I would propose that if anybody has a beverage on hand, you know, adult beverage or non-adult beverage, that we raise a glass. We have, yes, adult beverage. A lechayim to Rabbi Rose for all that he's given us and all that he's helped make us to be. So. L'chaim. L'chaim. To life. To life. V'hatz l'cha. And all you do. Okay, Daniel, you have the honor. Oh, and you're on mute. Yay, I got to say it once in a meeting. <laughs> I'm so glad I could provide that opportunity to you, Jemmy. <laughs> um, I believe that is all the business we have for today's, for today's meeting. So uh, I'd like to call for a motion to adjourn. You're welcome to speak up for uh, raise a hand or make a motion to adjourn. Thank you. It's not in the rules, but I second the motion. <laughs> second. No, that's not ours. That's not ours. That's the second. <laughs> that's <laughs> Marvelous. Well, then, thank you very much, everyone. And, Good luck to uh, you, Rabbi Rose. Rose. This is Marilyn. <laughs> make the dress. It was my second. Do you want? Uh, <laughs> you. You. Do, is there a vote, Daniel, to approve? It looks like there is. Okay. Uh, I would invite people. I know it's going to be a cacophony of, of Jewish voices, but to go ahead and unmute yourselves if you want to give shout outs and mazel tovs and thank yous to Rabbi Rose. Now is your time. This meeting has been recorded and will be available. The slide deck will be available. If there are after meeting questions, please send them to me, to Daniel, to Peter, to whomever. <laughs> and thank you so much for taking your time on this hot, hot, hot Sunday to gather together and do business and to celebrate Rabbi Rose. Thank you and Mazel Tov. Thank you. 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 Oh, sorry. Poor oh, folks. Lorraine, you you raised a wonderful son. Thank uh, you. Really, you that? Yeah, well, you really, really. Thank you all. Have a good evening.